Hey scholars, good to be back with you. And I'd like to start today on some fluid mechanics videos. I've been getting some questions about whether I would do fluid mechanics. Sure. I was trained as an aerospace engineer, so it seems like a good thing to do. And today's experiment is going to be really cool. We're going to spin a disc with just air. I'm going to show you how to do it. I've got a, a video of us down in the lab doing this. But a little bit of intro first. Um, there's this thing called aerodynamic drag. When you try to push something through the air, like an airplane, pretty cool plane, huh? Or you, or a car, or a bicycle, or a rocket, or whatever, um, there's aerodynamic drag. The resistance offered by the air is you try to move through it. Now, aerodynamic drag can come from a couple of places. One of the places is the pressure differential between the front and back. There's going to be high pressure here as you're going through the air, and low pressure there. And the difference between those can create drag. Another one is drag at the surface, drag from shear stress across the, uh, as you move through the air. I hate to do it, but I'm going to have to erase my cool little airplane here. Um, okay, well here's what it looks like. Let's say you've got a sur something going through the air. I've got a little board here. So let's pretend this is moving through the air and there's fluid moving across it. Well, if you look really close to the surface of my little board here, okay, So there's the surface right there, and then let's just let's just say this is a there's, there's my little cross section board, and the air is flowing this way. All right. Well, there's this thing called a boundary layer. If I plot the velocity as you move up from the surface, the velocity profile looks kind of like that. Okay, and it goes up like that. So we'll call that V infinity. That's the, that's the free stream. That's this velocity here. When you get far enough up from the surface, the air really is going uh, at V infinity, the, 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 the speed of the air uh, away from the wing. But when you get really, really close, away from the surface, when you get really, really close, the air slows down with respect to the surface, okay? And roughly this here is called the boundary layer. Okay, that means as you get really close to a surface, the air next to that surface isn't moving. Now, if you want a really cool example, uh, when I was uh, still working at an Air Force base, they flew an SR-71 in that big black spy plane, looks kind of like a lawn dart, and uh, flew it into the museum at the Air Force base over in Dayton. Well, it had flown in from California, I think, maybe Beale Air Force Base, and the crew chief over there had drawn on the vertical tail of the plane with chalk a picture of a tiger. And it was pretty good. I mean, apparently the level of, of, of artistic skills in these crews is, is pretty high. Somebody there is a pretty good artist. Drew this on with just plain old chalk, and this plane flew from California to Ohio. I don't know how many miles that is, to 1,500 miles, so 23, 2,400 kilometers. And it did it at probably more than Mach 2. So there's Mach 2 air flowing past this plane. When it landed, tiger was still there. How that happened? Well, this is how it happened. Because the chalk tiger on the plane didn't see this air, this Mach 2 air. It only saw that right there. So if I can find a picture of it here, I'll put a cut in the video and I'll insert that so you can see what that looks like. And this is the boundary layer. Well, if you change, if you change uh, velocities over a distance, there must be uh, uh, some forces acting, and there are. This is shear forces. Shear forces are acting right in there. If air has viscosity, and it does, that means it can transmit forces in shear. Okay, without it, without viscosity, you don't. So, like superfluid helium wouldn't do this. Well, I'm not going to be flying through superfluid helium anytime soon. Since I have to fly through air, and air has viscosity, not a lot, but some, this is what the boundary layer looks like. So, let's go to now a disk. Let's say that you have a disc, and I'll see if I can draw it here. There's a potato shaped disc, and it's got a shaft going through it, okay? This, this looks like a professor drawing, doesn't it? And the shaft can move. It's got bearings here, all right? So really good bearings right there and right down there. So really good bearing there, really good bearing down there. So I can spin this, okay, and there's very, very little resistance to spinning. It can't move any other direction, it can only spin. 
Well, if I were to take air and blow it across here, across the surface, there would be shear forces, right? That's the that's what you know. That's the boundary layer. That's the uh, 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 change in velocity as you get close to a surface. There's going to be shear forces. Well, if this really works, then this thing ought to start spinning, right? To look at it from the side, if there's a disc, and there's a rod there, and there's the rest of the disc over here. Okay, as the air comes in. Okay, to see what this would look like, here's, here's the disc up close. Okay, the rod's back here somewhere, so we're looking in this direction. If the air flows in like this, just like it did on that little plane drawing I just had, there's going to be a boundary layer. And it's going to look like this, where, again, this is velocity going that direction, and that's height going up that direction. That's, that's the plot I'm making here. Well, that, since there's a change in velocity there, there must be shear forces. And if there are shear forces, the disk is going to spin. Okay? So let's try it. Let's go down in the lab and uh, let's run this exact experiment. All right, I'm downstairs in the guitar lab and uh, these are my guys. They're building guitars right now and they have agreed to be quiet while I shoot this video. Right, guys? Yep. Right. All right, cool. Okay, so this little gizmo is something Raj made for a research project he's doing. This being Raj. This is a little wood frame right here, and it's got a plastic disc, a flat, sort of flat plastic disc on a steel axle. And the steel axle is riding on a single ball bearing down there. It's a, it's a, a sphere of st uh, stainless steel. And up here, it's got a skateboard bearing buried in the wood here. You can't really see it. And I've also set it up so that I've got a little, little mark here. This is a blue and green mark so you can see when the uh, disc is spinning. Watch this. See? Spins and spins and spins. Never slows down because these bearings are really good. If you're wondering whether ceramic skateboard bearings are good, well, that's what that is. I'm guessing they're pretty good. Now, the disc is not flat quite. This is, since this is a prototype, the, the, the final one will be flat. So you can see it wobble a little bit, but that's okay. So we know right now the friction in this system is basically zero. Okay, so there we go. I'll stop that. Now, the whole point of this video is to show you that you can start this, uh, start this spinning by uh, just shooting air across it and using the shear stresses across the surface to get the disc spinning. Well, I need some air. Well, there's air. By the way, I got, was painting a guitar today, so I've got blue all over my fingers if you're wondering what's going on there. Um, this nozzle has little safety ports on the side of it. I'm going to plug those with my hand to make sure the uh, flow field doesn't get too complicated. I want all the air to come out this front here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this right there. I'm going to cover the little ports up with my finger and I'm going to have the air shoot across that. And only the shear forces between the air and the uh, disc will make it spin. There's nothing else. There's, it's perfectly uh, circular. There's no wings or scoops or paddles or anything on it. There's no motors or pulleys. It's just a, 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 a passive thing here. So if this, this shear force thing, it's actually a thing, I should be able to spray that and it should start spinning. So let's try it. I'm going to stand up here. Okay, ready? You see that? Now it's spinning and it did it only through shear force, shear stress, between the air coming out of this and that disc. So there you have it. We have spun up a disc without touching it, only using the shear forces of moving air. Hope this helps and I'll see you next time.